you do that, you're also... Thank you, sweetheart. And if you could now make me a spotlight, then we can officially start. Somehow a spotlight video that works usually too. Maybe I can do it. No, it's not, I can't, can't press any buttons. So Linda, whenever you're ready. And I wanna read you girls something. As we ground down, imagine we have our roots connecting down into the core of the earth. Let's get into a good position. Linda, whenever that spotlight video works, let me know. I don't know how to do, Joy. Yeah, you, you, you I figure it out. You brought think... goddess to do this job. <laughs> I can't, it's blocked my button pressing. So Linda's got this. We're all being, you know, encouraged to go beyond our comfort zones. I'm sure Linda's going to figure it out. If not, we're just going to continue seeing all of us, which is also fine. So as we imagine these roots connecting to the core of the earth, let's become present of this moment right now. Take a couple of deep breaths, releasing all that no longer serves us. Drawing in all that connects us to our highest good. Mm. Taking a few breaths into our heart. Feeling the space around our heart. Filling it with love, with this light and energy. And now let's close our eyes if they're not closed and roll them up as if we're looking through the crown of our heads. Keep them rolled up there and then we say silently inside or out loud. Even if I don't know how to co-create a golden goddess circle that serves our highest good now, all I do know is it is so now and I am fulfilled. I delete, delete, delete all that could stop me. I download, download, download everything I need to do so now with grace, ease and joy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So it is, so it shall be, or something even better. One more breath. <sighs> relax the eyes, relax the mind, relax the body. Get up into a nice straight position, whether you're sitting or lying down. Make sure your neck is straight, your spine is straight, your belly button is sucked into your spine. Get it all nice and straight, there you go. And then open your eyes. Here we are. Whew. Good. So today I want to read you a few things. The reason why I want to do that is because I want to trigger emotions and ideas and memories and thoughts and stories inside of you. And then once we've triggered ourselves enough and we've be brave enough to just become aware of what is, right? What is happening right now? Then we're gonna do a fun process. Yay, Linda, you did it. We're gonna do a fun process where we're gonna release all that no longer serves us. And we're gonna download everything that we need, every skill, talent, resource, any energy program or pattern so that we can today and for this week coming forward, stay in our power, the power of love, the power of connection and compassion and courage and all that. Okay, you in for that? Cool. Okay, so let me read you a couple of notes. I, I love taking notes on my phone. Um, I'm not, I actually even more prefer writing things in, on paper, but when I'm, you know, traveling and something, it's really handy to use this note thing. So here are some notes that I took. And previous 30 days, if I found the right uh, one, there we go. It shows. <laughs> okay, I hear someone's microphone is on. This, this, these facts are a little unromantic, but they're true. 60% of all married women leave the financial planning to their husband. 60% of all married women leave all finances to their husband. At the same time, 
half of all married women with children are still earning less than 1,500 euros netto. 1,500, less than 1,500, half of them, right? After a separation, every third marriage is, ends in divorce, um, half of all the um, single parents are on the border of um, poverty. And that, although more women are working, right? More women in relationships are working. The gender pay gap still exists between, um, for women, and it's especially hard for ex-partners, female ex-partners. Um, single mothers are earning around 1,873 netto. Single dads are earning 2,461, so a lot, quite a bit more, right? 50% of all ex-partners do not pay alimony. 50% of all ex-partners do not pay alimony for their children, right? And another 25% pay too little. They're not paying what they should be paying. If mothers want to change a job, the next discrimination starts. They have to send out a third more in applications. Um, they, or, or, or to be just invited to an interview, okay? A third more, they have to send out more um, to be even invited than those who don't have a child. So just owning the fact that you're a mother will make it harder for you. At the same time, there are 100,000 places missing for children to be taken care of. So, you know, kindergartens and, and, and places like that. And because nine out of 10 children from separations live with their mother, um, a divorce is a huge issue for that mother to be able to actually, you know, uh, provide for her children. Um, and usually the divorce without a, a contract right, an extra contract made between partners creates a, a high financial risk for women, okay? So um, the reason why I wanna mention this is because I am noticing, and also myself, okay, I'm not putting, I'm, I'm not, I'm in the glass house here with you. Um, I am noticing how many women, even in, in high up positions, even badass executives are still leaving the financial control over to men. And that in itself wouldn't be a problem if we were better educated and were making more use of the power that we have as women in those relationships. But unfortunately, if we give over all financial control to our partners, to the bankers, to um, our tax people, to our bookkeepers, and they're all men, then that should show us that we as women are not really claiming our power here. Would you agree? Tell me in the chat, is this, is this feeling uncomfortable? Maybe even because you're realizing, wow, I really maybe even don't know enough. And I'll give you an example. A, a dear friend of mine, one of my best friends, actually studied economics, is a badass woman, really. She's, she's in control of life and everything, and she's, she's a wonderful girl. But just the other day when I wanted to sign her up for the gold platform and help her invest money and, and earn gold and, and really, you know, start building up a financial security for her, it was already a challenge to get a proof of address. Because you see, when you start investing, whether it's at a bank or at a, at a different company like the Gigos, right, this gold platform, you have to also prove that you are actually a person. So you have to send in your, a copy of your passport and you have to send in a proof of address so that you are a legal person who is allowed to be an investor. That, that's a normal thing to have to do. They have to do due diligence, too. But you see, if you're now, for instance, like my friend, a married woman where the husband pays all the bills, it's very hard to even get an act proof of address because she doesn't have a phone bill on her name. She doesn't have an electricity bill on her name. So just think about that. I know that when um, we moved to America, I was, I was kind of an alien there. Me and my kids, we, we were not, did not yet have an official status of a green card. So I was just the, just the wife of Roy who had then gained citizenship. 
So when I wanted to open up a bank account or do have a phone even, I couldn't because I couldn't prove to the US that I had, a, I didn't have the phone bill to prove the bank account, but I couldn't get the bank account without the phone bill, but I couldn't get the phone without having a bank account. So it's like a catch 22. So really look at that in your life and see where could I gain more control over my finances, over my investment, over my financial security by, uh, by claiming more responsibility and, and also claiming more independence. You know, um, I also, I've gone through different stages in my life of having my own bank account, then having a joint bank account, having separate finances, having joint finances. And I can only give you the advice from my experience please have your own finances under your control. It'll give you so much more certainty and clarity in life and, and more confidence that you know that you actually can fend for yourself and you can take care of the basic stuff in life. I know it's not fun, but it's totally doable, right? And if I see how independent and, and confident and what a badass my mom is nearing 80, I really have to take my hat off to her, but also my grandmother, you know, uh, the, the British grandmother was working until she was about 75 years old. She was a physical therapist. She friggin' loved her job and she was always independent. So I had great role models, but I also had my Austrian grandma where when her husband died, her kids, her sons had to take over because she had no idea. So can we just claim... <sighs> I can do this, I will do this, and I'm doing this now. I am claiming my financial independence and I deserve to be financially free. Can you say that to yourself? I deserve to be financially free and independent. Cool, okay. So looking at that relationship that we have with our finances, let's take another step out and say, okay, it's money, it's a relationship. Now, what if my relationship to money is just a mirror of the relationship that I actually have with myself? What if? Because if we say that we're living in a quantum multiverse and it's all just energy, then every single relationship that I have, whether it's a person, a place, um, a thing, or even money, right, is actually a mirror to something that is happening inside of me. Does that make sense? So if we look at our relationship, then it's really interesting in relationships to look at our attachments, okay? So in psychology, we learn the different attachment styles that we form when we're very little. These attachment styles are usually even formed in the first three years of our lives, and then they get ingrained in the first seven years, and then they're kind of set, unless we do something about it, unless we're willing to invest into personal transformation, do these deep dives, and really confront ourselves with what is, and then claim the power and, and you know, the responsibility of the creator to say, okay, so once I have become aware of something, I can do something about it. So when we look at the different attachment styles in relationships, this all goes back to psychological studies that were done a long time ago in the 50s, right? And in the 50s, they watched children and they put children and their moms in these clinical settings, which was a little playroom with lots of toys. And then there would be a kind sort of nanny type, a, a, a teacher sort of a person in there. And then the mom would come in with the little kid around two or three years old and would come into the room and would then leave. And then they would watch what the child would do. And they noticed a lots of different things that there would be children who would come in, they would feel distressed and, and you know, cry because mommy's gone, but then they'd distract themselves and then they'd start playing. They'd even play with the teacher. And then when mommy came back, ah, they were really happy to see mom and they'd sit with mom and be happy with mom. And then they'd go off and play again. They were very secure in their attachment. They could deal with being with mommy, being without, with, with, being without mommy, and then mommy coming back again, and they felt secure, right? That's one form of attachment, secure attachment. Then we have insecure or anxious, right? And then we have avoidant. 
So an insecure or anxious child coming in with the mom would first of all have a lot of trouble letting mom even go, wouldn't even play even when mom was in the room. But then when mom left, it would be devastated. It would be unconsolable and would not stop crying until mom came back again. Right. And then when mom come back, came back again, it would cling on to mom and would not leave her side very anxious and insecure. Then we have the avoidant type. Now, the avoidant type will come in with mom, will show stress when mom leaves, will calm down then again, will play, will do something, distract itself. But when mom comes back, it won't even go to mom anymore. It's like angry. It, it doesn't attach. It, it has trouble even attaching attaching because it avoids that it creates pain so I'll read you something here that I got today actually from Gabby Bernstein because I'm doing her 14 day relationship challenge I love learning new stuff and I love Gabby Bernstein so I'm taking part in this challenge and there we go where are my notes to explain the attachments even better if you have a secure attachment you're probably very confident in relationships but you might get triggered by the people who don't share your secure attachment style. You can't always understand their behaviors and reactions. And so you might react to the trigger by feeling confused or frustrated. Even if you're confident in relationships, it's sometimes difficult to be in relationships with people who don't share that secure attachment style. Next. The anxious or insecure attachment style applies to the person who's very clingy. Someone with this attachment style might want to move in with someone right after the first date. This type of person feels incomplete without a relationship. If you have an anxious attachment style, you get triggered when you feel like you could lose the relationship. So you may be shut down, maybe you play hard to get, or maybe you cling to the relationship even more tightly, even if you know deep down that the relationship isn't right for you. The avoidant attach attachment style shows up like this. In relationships, you get triggered when things get too serious. You shy away from being too vulnerable. Intimate connection with people is scary to you. So you react to that trigger by pulling back. This is the attachment style that's most likely to ghost someone, you know, when you just don't show up anymore. <clears throat> to help you identify your attachment style, now let's review these three attachment styles. The qualities you resonate with most will guide you to the style that is most you. Oh, where's it gone? <clears throat> One second. Secure. Your attachment qualities include as a child, you experienced a feeling of safety and security provided by your primary caregivers. You trust your romantic partners and close friends. You easily express your feelings and needs. You seek out social support when you need it. You're naturally supportive and emotionally stable. You have strong boundaries and a clear sense of what to do when they're crossed. You see the good in yourself and others, and giving others the benefit of doubt comes easily to you. Now we'll move on to the anxious or insecure. Your attachment qualities include, as a child, you may have experienced inconsistent parenting or care from your primary caregivers. You're deeply caring, sensitive, empathetic, and attuned to the needs of others and yourself. You're wary of trusting others, even though you deeply crave the security that comes with trust. You may have low self-esteem, particularly when it comes to relationships. You're extremely sensitive to the actions and moods of others. True intimacy is one of your highest values, but it doesn't always come easily. Next, avoidant. Your attachment qualities include as a child, you likely had unmet needs. You came to believe that no one could make you feel safe, that you have to do everything yourself. You may be turned off when a partner is too clingy or too emotional. You value independence. You're an excellent decision maker. You might feel vulnerable or uncomfortable being vulnerable. And you pull back when a relationship starts to get serious. 
Now, let me check in with you. It's switch to gallery view. Do you recognize those different attachment styles? Yeah? Do you recognize one that comes, that feels strongest right now? Notice that in different parts of our life, in different phases of our lives, in different relationships, we can show different attachment styles. So I'll take myself for an example. I would say I'm more a secure attachment style. I had a great childhood. My, my parents were amazing parents. I grew up to be, you know, they valued independence and confidence. So I was very, very secure until I got married the first time to a much older man, 20 years older, right? I got to work through some daddy issues there. And there in that relationship, I went from very secure to feeling very insecure. And then it ended when my first husband left for another woman. So there was betrayal, there was cheating going on. And I left feeling incredibly insecure and anxious. And I noticed that. So I did a lot of self-work because, you know, you've got to move through your grief. You've got to end this all. And it, it ended up, you know, being a good, clean divorce. And it was all good. And we're good friends now. But I noticed that in the relationship after that, so with Gracie's dad, I was more avoidant. I had been traumatized by that other relationship. And there was so much in me that didn't want to go there anymore. I was like, hell no. <laughs> and I can now see looking back that Gracie's dad had trouble with me because I was very avoidant and he was very insecure. So it was a kind of toxic and, and, and very inspiring too, but it was a very passionate relationship. We split up, I don't know, every four months, every four months I'd kick him out of my place again. I refused to live with him. I was like, no, no, no. And I got to experience the other side again, okay? And then fast forward, I meet Roy and I was able to work through new relationship patterns there and work through all the different styles of attachment that we can show depending on who is it that we're dealing with. And remember, again, when we say, who is it that we're dealing with, it doesn't necessarily have to be a person. Right now, we could also look at money. So in what phases of your life are you showing which attachment style when it comes to money? Are you anxious about money? Are you insecure about it? Um, do you avoid the topic? Like, oh, no, I don't care. Hmm? Or do you feel secure with money? Where are you right now? Just notice. Just notice what's coming up for you and notice which parts of your body are feeling a sensation. Just notice. Notice where in your body can you feel a little stress, a little tense, a little stickiness, a little something. You all with me still? Okay. Now take a breath into that space and give it a number. Give this feeling a number from zero to 10. Zero would mean there's no feeling there at all. And 10 would mean like, oh, it's really, really strong, okay? So just notice what is there. And then maybe give it a color. Does this feeling, this space in you, does it have a certain color? And just notice that. Okay, now that we've done our research, we've defined what it is. We're now gonna do the goddess breath. Now, those of you that have you know, been here for a while, will remember in one of the first sessions, we talked about this wonderful tool. I love using breath as a tool for transformation, a tool for empowerment and energy, because it's for free and we can all do it. Isn't it true that we can all breathe? Yes, right? So the goddess breath is really simple. I took Wim Hof's breath, that I'm sure is not even his, but it's one that he teaches. So where we take 30 breaths in and out in and out through the nose. You can also breathe through your mouth, but I like doing it through the nose because the nose also filters the air, right? And you don't get this dry feeling in your mouth. But if you wanna breathe through your mouth or if your nose is congested, that is fine too, okay? So we start by taking 30 breaths in and out, okay? Full deep breaths and we just let it go, okay? You don't force the air out, you just draw it in and then you let it go, okay? Then after the 30th breath, you draw it in, you breathe it out, and you hold it out. You don't breathe, okay? You hold it out as long as you feel is right for you. 
The aim is to over time stretch that phase of breath retention. You're training your lungs, you're creating nitric oxide in your body, an amazing antioxidant. You're bringing in a bunch of oxygen into your body, you're oxygenizing your entire body. So that's a really interesting phase to be in when the breath is out, because this also triggers the amygdala and all parts of your brain that will then, oh my God, I'm dying, I'm not breathing. Oh my God, I've got to breathe, I've got to breathe. But you know what? There are pearl fishers and divers and people who do this deep, deep sea diving without oxygen tank tanks and stuff, and they can hold their breath out for what is it, like two minutes? It's possible. So just think. And I know that when they bring these people out of, of, right, you know, when they're still holding their breath out, they fish them out of the water, they put them gently on the beach, they have to gently blow their face to remind them to breathe again. So just think about that. We hold our breath out. While we hold our breath out, it's really nice to keep the mind focused because the mind could have the tendency to go all over the place. Now, what if? In the breath retention phase, you were to say something beautiful like the Ho'oponopono. I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Keep repeating that. It'll keep your mind focused. And I like imagining that in that time, I am flushing out, forgiving, letting go any stuff that doesn't serve my highest good. Just let it out, let it out, let it out. Keep the breath out and then when it's time to breathe in again, you breathe in and then you hold the air in. This is where you're blasting oxygen into all the capillaries, all the parts of your blood system. It's amazing, right? So you breathe in, you hold, you hold for around 20 seconds, something like that. And I like when I breathe in and hold, I like affirming to myself. I expand into health, love, joy, success, and abundance while I inspire those around me to do the same. Yes? Okay? So now we're going to take all the energy that we conjured up right now by triggering ourselves, right? By looking at our attachment styles, by talking about money and stuff like that. We're now going to use all that and we are going to transmutate it in our own bodies. We're going to use this gorgeous vessel that we have with the intention to expand into health, love, joy, success, abundance, and more and freedom and all that good stuff while we inspire others to do the same. Are you in? Yes. Let's let iPhone in on the waiting room just because she's in and she can breathe with us. I'm sure there's a reason why she's late. <laughs> Okay, admit iPhone, there we go. So you can do this breath exercise lying down or um, sitting upright. I don't know why this is going, yeah, second, oh, whatever. Okay, so get into a nice straight position. And you can close your eyes and keep them open. We're gonna take 30 breaths in and out. Let's get going. Pull the air out, pull it out. Let's breathe in and hold. Let's 
and exhale. Release. Doesn't that feel good? Normally I do three rounds. Now we're going to tap underneath our collarbones and we're going to say, I love and accept myself with all my fears in relationships, my fears around money, my fears around attachments. I love and accept myself. And I now choose to release these fears <clears throat> and to step into my power of courage. I can do this. I will do this. And I am doing this now. <sighs> Good job, good job. Now, left arm underneath your left arm, it'll be mirrored, left arm. Relationships, money, attachment. I love and accept myself with all my lack of confidence, with all my insecurity, my lack of self-worth, my lack of self-love, whatever. I love and accept myself at my deepest level. And from the very first time, I felt this way. And I choose now to release all my doubts, all the sense of lack, and to step into my power of confidence and empowerment and, and worthiness. I know I deserve a long, healthy, happy, abundant, vital, joyful, loving, and peaceful life. Ah, good job. Thumbs, strike them against each other. Relationships, attachments, money. I love and accept myself with all the grief that I feel and have ever felt at my deepest level. And from the very first time I feel grief. And I choose now to release this grief and to step into my power of joy. I deserve to be happy and I am choosing to be happy now. And breathe. Good job. Now, go ahead and tap your liver and your spleen. Okay, liver and spleen. Tap your liver and spleen and say, relationships, money, attachments. I love and accept myself <laughs> with all my anger at my deepest level. And from the very first time, I felt angry. And I choose now to release this anger and step into my power of forgiveness and peace. Peace is who I am. <sighs> okay, now let's cut the cord, shall we? Let's imagine we're looking this whole thing in the eye from heart to heart. And we say, I claim my power back. And I give you your power back. I claim my freedom back. And I give you your freedom back. I claim back what's mine and I give you what's yours. I forgive you for all the pain and suffering you ever created. And I ask for forgiveness for any pain and suffering I ever created. The past remains in the past. Only love can connect us. I wish you well, just as I wish myself well. <sighs> okay, next round of breath, we're sealing the deal. This time, when we breathe, imagine you are breathing for your financial freedom, okay? You're gonna give it all. Breathe in deep and out deep, right? Breathe, motherfuckers, as Wim Hof says. I can say that, he said that. Okay, so here we go. Get into position, 30 breaths. Here we go. Breathe it out.
Nice breathe in. Hold. And exhale, release. Tune into your heart. Take deep breaths into that beautiful core. And imagine your favorite healing color expanding out right from the center of your heart, blessing your heart as you affirm inside of yourself, may I feel safe. May I feel healthy. May I feel happy. And may I live life with ease. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Allow that healing color to expand out, to fill your lungs, your chest, your shoulders, your arms, your back, right? Bring it into the palms of your hands, imagining this healing color activating, activating, activating your healing centers in the palms of your hands so that whoever you touch, wherever you go, that healing touch, that love that you are is tangible. Right, then bring it down into your belly, bless all inner organs with this healing color, saying thank you, thank you, thank you to your body. Bring it down into your hips, into your pussy, that's right, bring it down into your legs, your knees, your ankles, your feet, charge your entire body with this healing color. Imagine blessing every single one of your trillions of cells with light as you expand out into love, joy, success, health, and abundance and freedom. And you inspire all those around you to do the same. So imagine now charging your auric field, that electromagnetic field around your body with this healing color. Make sure your aura is complete. Check for any holes, any darkness, any stickiness, just push it out, transmute it, allow the light to do the work for you. Make your aura strong, expand it out. That's right. And now send out that healing color to someone you love. Send it to your family, send it to your home, send it to your country. Imagine sending it all around the globe, lighting up this globe so that all beings on this planet may feel healthy and happy and safe and live life with ease. That's right. And then in your own time, come back into your body, bring your awareness right into that center of your heart. Say, yes, 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 yes. I am ready for this day. I am ready for this week. I am ready for life now. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. And then with your next deep breath in and out, come back into the here and now. Open your eyes, rub your hands together. Smell that sweet smell of success for job. Well done. Tap yourself on one shoulder, then on the other shoulder. Give yourself a nice body hug. Give yourself a little stroke here and then let me know when you're back. And then let's see all our beautiful faces and switch to gallery view. How's everyone doing? Arena, Astrid, Kareen, Camilita, Caroline. How is everyone? Hello. Mirella, how are you? Yeah, energized and peaceful, and um, yeah, I just just expanding. I feel I still mm -hmm. feel like it's it's growing, it's getting bigger, and it's yeah, feels very strong and powerful. Nice, thank you, Yolanda. You're unmuted. How are you doing? Ah, yeah, really good. I feel open, 
feel uh, satisfied and uh, I was starting the challenge, uh, the 30 days challenge with Roy last week because suddenly I discovered it was in my membership. Uh, so, and I was buying it a, a long time ago, but it didn't, it didn't come and suddenly it was there. So I started and I was just on the day we are talking about today. So. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. There are synchronicities, right? There are no coincidences, only synchronicities. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Arena, how are you doing? Arena, unmute yourself. Let us know how are you today? Oh, there you are. Oh, and you muted yourself again. Go for it. <laughs> or anyone else, any feedback you'd like to share? Uh, Joy, for me, it was so funny because this morning I started with such a bad cough. Oh. I already started yesterday because I had a, a conflict in myself and I really called everybody was I, because I was shouting out and crying for help. And I also texted Sandra, OK, what do you have for a cough? So the breathing session was really exactly spot on. And after, you know, everything is flowing now and I'm back again. Thank you. Nice. You're so welcome. Yeah, breathe, babies, breathe. Really, I, yeah. I do this minimum three times a day now. It's 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 it becomes a habit. Literally, anytime I get a chance, <laughs> you'll find me doing that. It's it's I think one of the best tools that we can use to help ourselves. Nice, thank you. Anyone else? Any feedback? Anything you're noticing? Anything you want to share? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I have. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. So Dinny, Dinny first, then Nicole, and then Ingrid, okay? Okay, no, well, just um, that I like to start this breathing more. I, fe I feel good now. I feel peaceful and happy and, yeah, so I will start doing it. Thank you we for you. teaching. We will check in yeah. with you the next time to find out if you really did. Yeah, cool. you, it's okay. I will. Thank Wonderful. You. Glad to hear that. Okay, I think Nicole next. Uh, hi, good morning. So nice to be with you all. That was a fantastic session for me and it fitted so perfectly because I realized the attachments to certain situations and things. I sometimes have problems leaving a place and I know you have good tools for that, <laughs> cutting the links and so on. And uh, I'm just in the process of uh, moving to a new place and uh, uh, we have decided to do this and in the moment I decided to do it and it came so magically and it was so ah I felt so blessed then I realized I was in that place yesterday and suddenly I got so attached to the old place again and mm -hmm. I felt like uh, I came back home and even I know that I, 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 I am leaving from here because I have my reasons and it's very important to go I suddenly fell back again into this, ah, I am attached to this old place and maybe this new place is not even that good. So mm -hmm. I, and this helped me today very much to appreciate it much more and really go for it. <laughs> so Thank glad, you. yeah, um, it's so funny. I, I think, so those of you who follow me on social will have seen, I shared it, that the, you know, when we did our bad girl um, protocol, right? One of the things that I, I had put on my list was if I was a bad girl, I would go partying for three months. I would just go from one music festival to the next for three months straight, and I wouldn't feel guilty about it at all, right? So I put that out there, and then the week after, not even, within a week, I'm invited to go to the Oktoberfest and to a rave and literally dance the whole night. So this stuff happens, right? It's so interesting the moment we claim a desire and we say, yeah, I want this. I want this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Ingrid, you're next. Yes, um, it's our second time today. And uh, the f it was a fortnight ago. So uh, I had a really good week that week. And I'm uh, feeling more energized. And already to this morning as well, I feel lighter. Um, more energized, yeah, uh, feeling yeah, really happy to go into the week, you know, 
Yes, I love that. Thank you. And so thank you. thank you very much for starting okay. on the Monday. Yeah, it's really okay. nice. Right. And soon we're going to have Tuesdays for the German speakers. So we're starting on the 18th of October, everyone. I would really appreciate your help on social to, to gather more women, right? So yes, I will, I will uh, do that because I have also very a big family in Austria. So. Oh, lovely. Great. Yeah. That was gorgeous. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Okay. Anybody else want to share something? Or have a question? Does anybody need help with something? Karine is showing up. I saw you, so unmute yourself, Karine, and tell me. Um, I had some dizziness in my head, in my head while doing the breathing, and it was uh, the second time difficult to follow the rhythm. And I said to myself, "Okay, now you cannot follow the rhythm. Follow your own." Uh, rhythm and that was um, I did it without guilt and uh, I said to myself next time you can maybe you can do better but it was good to feel that I could say to myself follow your own rhythm and um, yeah you don't have to push yourself so I love I that. that because normally I always want uh, to do what they ask from me and and uh, it was good to say no I'm going to follow my own rhythm I am so proud of you that makes me so happy because yes you do need to follow your own rhythm and I didn't even tell you right I could I should have maybe said and by the way follow your own rhythm but you knew it you did it right and yeah. and you resisted that temptation to push yourself and conform and and yeah do what you're told do it right you did it right by doing it your way that's excellent yes so definitely with all breath practices um do your own thing it is good sometimes to have someone leading because it helps you kind of expand so i notice sometimes i'll follow a guided sort of breath session of some other teacher and it'll it'll stretch me because then they're defining, right? I've got to be submissive. And I like doing both. And then when I breathe for myself, of course, I follow my own rhythm. And I notice that, you know, it's very different in the morning and in the evening. Like in the morning at the beginning, interestingly enough, it's harder to keep the breath out. And, and in the evening, I before I go to bed, sometimes I'll do, I don't know, 10, 20 rounds until I literally pff, not off to sleep. That's how I, I go into sleep. And I'm very sensitive in my sleep patterns. So I'm very nice sensitive. I, I don't like co-sleeping. I'll be totally straight with you. I've never liked it, never liked it with my brothers. I never liked it with my own children. I love cuddling them, but I like sleeping on my own. I just, I wake up so quickly. Um, so I would often when they were, of course, when they were sick and something, I'd take them into my bed, cuddle them. But as soon as they were asleep, I'd put them back in their bed because otherwise I wouldn't sleep. And, and even with partners, I mean, my partners know that about me, right? My <laughs> husbands know this, I, I love the cuddle, but then get out of my space. I want my space, <laughs> right? So yeah, it's, it's good to use breath. Like it, for me, it creates my own space. I feel that when I'm doing this breath work, I can imagine my bubble around me and it doesn't matter what's going on around me. Even if someone's celebrating a party or I don't know anything, I, I'll just breathe my way through it. It's, it's I think, one of the most beautiful um, ways to meditate. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Karine. I want, to tell, I want to tell something. Please, Yolanda. Yeah. Um, when I'm doing the breathing in the morning and um, I'm starting to work, this is so strange. I always want to make only very big paintings. And, and then I think, yeah, but I cannot only make big paintings, but the breathing is doing this. It's, it's making... It's expanding you? Yeah. Nice. So you're, so you're an artist, right? I am. You're an artist? Yes, yes. Right? And, and have, I see artist. that you have one. <laughs> I saw it, yeah, I just saw it, yeah. I have a Yolanda hanging, yes, thank, uh, you. Yeah. thank you. So you're saying that you're noticing that your art is requiring more space. Yeah. And then I noticed that you said, but I can't just make big paintings. Yeah. Says who? 
<laughs> because <laughs> I, well, a big painting is more difficult to sell, of course. Is that true? Well, yeah. No, not really. So me, me personally, for instance, at the moment, this is just me, right? I love big paintings. Um, I have more the challenge that in my apartment, there are not that many big walls, three. <laughs> but, you know, right here from where I'm sitting, I have this one big wall. And in this one big wall, it's my relationship corner. So I now have a little sort of, I have some stuff there, so it's pretty and stuff. But I had a friend around who was telling me, you know, this sucks. If that's your relationship corner, sister, you could do better. So yeah. I've, I've decided, because I don't have much space there, but what I would have is I would have space for big picture. And I, I want to <laughs> badass thing there. So I'm already creating it in my mind of what would it look like? So I would, I would consider eliminating that, what feels a little limiting in belief that only small paintings or smaller things are easier to sell and that big ones are not. I would, I would, I mean, if I were you, I'd bust that one. But I mean uh, about three meter, two meter, eh? it's, it's really big. It, wow. it was, if this was uh, last week after uh, our uh, goddess meeting, I was starting on this painting. Damn, I love the colors. Yes, sister. Yeah. It's big, eh? It's really, yeah. really. <laughs> we are looking for new places, a new home. So um, we need big. And for the uh, lighthouse for uh, for Joy, we need big. And we are, you know what? In the lighthouse, we want to do an. I, I will come and make it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm just working on the twenty two. Another one. Oh, nice. That were my healing colors in the in the breathing. So yeah, this is but but this was uh, also after uh, uh, meditation I did, and it's it's so strange because my colors are changing uh, a lot the last uh, couple of months. So I'm happy, very happy uh, colors. <laughs> you well. look very happy and radiant too. And if I can give you some feedback, I mean, just we look at what is. You're a big woman too. I, you're, you're not this scrawny little elf, right? You, you're a yeah. big lady. So of course you should have big art too. I, I feel that that's, it makes so much sense. You're a big energy and, and that needs expression. And, you know, think of Banksy. Think of artists who just, you know, he, he's oh, a yeah. <laughs> you don't even know, is it a he or a she, right? But Banksy goes and puts art on huge walls and, and people are taking pictures of that and it's becoming a sacred place. Now I'm not inviting everyone to graffiti all over the place, don't get me wrong, right? But <laughs> Yolanda, you are an artist. So, or then think of Christo who had this idea of wrapping entire buildings, parks. I mean, no, 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 you go, you go, keep expanding. We're watching you, we like this, thank you. And, and I'd love to see your pictures on the Jai Tribe too, if you could take a couple of pictures and, and share. Look, this is what I painted after our last Golden Goddess session. I mean, can you imagine how many other artists you'll inspire with your sharing? Mm -hmm. Okay, I will. I, I never wanted to do it uh, to make like, uh, to make a promotion or. Anything. Well, it's a difference of promotion and sharing. So, you know, I, the Jai Tribe is very open to, to all sharings as long as I see that there's a good intention behind it. If I see that someone's just pitching a product the whole time and there's no information, there's no connection, I'm like, get out, stop it, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but I, I love sharing what, what our tribe members are doing because as long as it's uh, information that is valuable to others and inspiring, hell yes, do it. Okay. And tag me in the post. I will. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got five minutes to go. It's time to close the circle unless there's some urgent matter that still needs to be discussed. Uh, has anybody here got a crisis right now? Anybody like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Sabrina is uh, holding her hand. Yeah, Sabrina. hello Sabrina. What's up? You can unmute yourself, Sabrina. We don't hear you. Ah, you're there. Yes. 
Yeah. It's, okay. <clears throat> I love for everyone. Enjoy. Joy, I want to tell you thank you, thank you, thank you. Because uh, a few days, my father with his word killed my heart. And with his I, word, I, your heart, okay? Mm -hmm. And I was very angry, triste. But uh, I choose to stay in my power. I see you in my heart, your word. And I, I choose to stay in my power, to stay in my heart, because his energy is powerful for me. And my energy uh, fa paura agli altri. Uh, my energy uh, for the other is, uh, is, ma is too much, but uh, I want to expand it, my love and my peace. And I pianto every day, every night, last week. And yesterday I choose to stay happy, to stay grateful for my husband, for my son, for all my life and the abundance I have in this moment. And I go to the Oktoberfest and beer and dance, country dance for much hour. And I and I, I try to stay in my power. It's very difficult when your father killed your heart and your soul. Oh, honey, 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 I, I love what you're sharing and I love that you're being so honest. I really appreciate that. And I just want to remind you of the power of your words, the words that you use. So when you say, my father killed my heart, my father killed my soul, that hurts. Yes. That sounds very painful. Yes. And by using these words, you're increasing that pain for yourself. Because your father can't kill your heart, can he? Is he, is he literally taking a knife and digging it in there? Then no, right? It might feel like that because yes. our, our fathers are primary role models for us, right? Yeah. So maybe you could see him by, by doing what you're doing. And I love that you took a step out, that you said, okay, no, I'm going to step into my power. I know I'm feeling angry all this stuff but I'm going to tune into gratitude I'm going to tune into what's good in life and I'm actually going to go out dancing that was a brilliant choice because you didn't pursue the path of oh he's killed me you pursued the path of what gives me joy right now how can I uplift myself and that's really good so now yeah. maybe you're ready or I think you are ready right now for the next step of seeing what is your dad actually teaching you because your dad, you chose him. You chose this father in this life for a very specific reason. Because he was going to teach you something about love that you needed to learn. So what would it be that your dad is teaching you right now, if you knew? Yeah. Thank you. No, I, uh, what, is, what is it? What is your dad you? What, I don't understand. Your father is teaching you something. You see it as he's killing my heart. I'm saying, no, he's not killing your heart. He's actually helping you tune into your heart and make it stronger so that you are learning something. The moment you learn, you realize what it is that this person is trying to teach you, the pain is gone because you can see the gift and you no longer see it as someone who is an aggressor against you. What if he's your best unpaid coach, the one who will relentlessly stay at you until you get the message. What is yeah. the message? Maybe it's, hey, love yourself. Hey, take care of this first before you start taking care of others. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure he's teaching you forgiveness. I'm sure he's teaching you how to be compassionate. I'm sure he's teaching you how to get out of a ah, painful situation and help yourself. Yeah. Did you think? 
it, yes, it's right. He is uh, arrabbiato, I don't know English. He's an, he's an angry guy. An angry man, a yeah. man uh, uh, 45. And um, mi dispiace saperlo arrabbiato. Mi dispiace. You don't like anger. I get that. I get he, that. He don't want my help. He don't want my care. Then don't do it. That's the, there you go. Why do you even bother? If, if you're dealing with an angry man who does not want your help or care, then why are you still helping and caring? Care from a distance. Send him your prayers. But don't invest your energy there. And because most of all, don't get angry about it, honey. I love you. And he is my only parent now. I get it. So that's even more important then to change the dynamic of that relationship. You have to change how you interact with him. And you know, this, this is, this is going to be too much for this call right now, but maybe we can get you in on a hot seat in the next goddess call. And yeah. then we can deal with this because we all have daddy things and we all have angry men in our life that we have to deal with and angry women as well. Right? So how do we deal with anger like that? And how do we not let it become like that oof, in the heart? But we can say, hey, oof, I'm safe. I'm learning. That's all that's happening. Are you thank okay with that? Thank you, Joy. You are very important for me. Oh, thank you so much. And I will we'll stay on this. In the meantime, you have Joy work to do. Cut the links. Cut the karmic links with your dad. Okay? Yeah, you know the every day. Happening? Good. Keep cutting the links, keep tuning in what you really want, write your bad girl protocol and start writing your book of desires where you write down all the things you really, really want. Okay? Yeah. Okay, it's and true. if you're on the call true. next week- I, pr I promise. You promise, I love that. If you're on the call next week, we'll get you onto a hot seat because some things like that will help everyone, okay? Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you everyone to you. Let's gather all the energy in, all the sparkles we've created. Let's bring them up to the sky and draw them into our heart. Ah, push your thumbs against your chest bone. Affirm to yourself, I am love. I am eternal. I am infinite. May the golden light of the goddess bless your path. May love walk before you, behind you, and at each side of you. Thank you for being part of this beautiful circle. Now be that joy and go share that joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah. See you next week. Bye-bye, darlings. Bye-bye.